Hey fellow explorers, it's Chris from TDR Explore. Today, I'm gonna to tell you 10 mistakes to avoid when you're visiting Shanghai Disneyland. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this one. It's gonna make your day so much easier when you're in the park. Number one, not doing your research ahead of time about travel visas to mainland China. In order to visit mainland China, you're going to need a travel visa. And there's a couple ways to do this. One option is getting a Chinese visa in your passport before you go on your trip. In order to do this, you're gonna have to apply at a Chinese embassy that is nearest to you. Since I am a Canadian citizen, I got a Chinese visa ahead of time, put in my passport. It cost me about $130 and it's good for the duration of my passport and I can enter mainland China as many times as I want. Another option is getting the transit visa, which is given to you when you arrive in mainland China. Also, it's free. All you have to do is prove that you're transiting through the country. So as an example, you're going from Vancouver, Canada to Shanghai to Tokyo. All you have to do is prove that is the route that you are taking and you'll be given a transit visa. Now make sure you have your flight itinerary printed out with your name that matches exactly on your passport and same thing with your hotel reservations or accommodations while you're in mainland China. And make sure everybody's name is also on the reservation if they are getting a transit visa as well. For more information on travel visas, I highly recommend reading the Travel China Guide website and also consult your government website to make sure you know the requirements for a visa when you're visiting mainland China. Last thing you want to happen is being denied entry into the country. We really don't want that. I don't want that to happen to you because I want you to ride Tron and Pirates when you're at Shanghai Disneyland because it's amazing. Number two, visiting on a national holiday or weekend. Now, just like any other theme park, you definitely do not want to visit on a weekend or a holiday. Shanghai Disneyland is no exception. The biggest holidays are the Chinese New Year, which is typically in January and February. That does change every year, so you're going to have to check ahead of time to see when that actually happens, and it's for a week long. Then we also have National Day at the first week of October, which is also known as Golden Week. Again, this is another seven day holiday and it's gonna be very busy. As a general rule of thumb, it's best to visit between Tuesday and Friday. That is typically when the crowds are a little bit lower. Number three, not using the official Shanghai Disneyland app. Seriously, you need to use it so you can check wait times, also make fast pass reservations and check show times. It is really easy to use and there's also free Wi-Fi in the park that works perfectly fine with the app. So make sure you download ahead of time and get it all set up. Number four, not having a fast pass strategy. You don't wanna waste time not knowing what fast passes to get. So having a strategy ahead of time is really gonna save you a lot of time. So once you get into the park, scan your ticket into your Shanghai Disneyland app and you can start getting fast passes right away. First thing you should do is get a fast pass for either Soaring or Roaring Rapids because these are among the longest waits in the park. So once you have a fast pass for one of those attractions, head on over to Tron, ride that in standby, then make your way to Peter Pan in Fantasyland and ride that on standby. Then once you're done that, head on all the way over to Pirates of the Caribbean and do that on standby. Now, by the time you get to Pirates of the Caribbean, you should be eligible to get another fast pass in the app. Just make sure you check. Then after that, you can either get a fast pass for Roaring Rapids or Soaring, whichever one you haven't gotten yet, or you can also get something for Snow White or Winnie the Pooh because those also have very high wait times. And then afterwards, if there's any left, you can try and get fast passes again for Tron in the evening because I really do recommend you ride it in the evening. And also maybe try Peter Pan again because I love Peter Pan, it's a lot of fun. Now the fast passes are free through the app when you're in the park and you can reserve them as long as there's some left. Another option is also the Disney Premier Pass, which is a paid fast pass. Now you do this right through the app and it works just like a fast pass, except you gotta pay for it. And there's no return time, just make sure you use it before the end of the day. Now this is a perfect way to skip the line and if you're there on a busy day for whatever reason and there's no fast passes left and you really wanna ride one more time without having to wait two hours or whatever the wait time is, this is a really good option. Number five. Being stuck behind the Great Firewall of China. Websites such as Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Gmail, 
and tons of other popular sites and apps are blocked and you can't access them when you're in mainland China. And this is also called the Great Firewall of China. Now there is a few ways to get around this. My most recommended one is getting this SIM card if you have an unlocked phone. Now it is about $15 and you get two gigabytes of data and you can use this SIM card in both Hong Kong and mainland China. And the best thing about this is it is not affected by the Great Firewall of China, meaning you can access all your apps and websites just like you can at home. I use this every single time I go to mainland China and Shanghai Disneyland, so this one I do recommend highly. Now, if you don't have an unlocked device or you're using your laptop, you're gonna to have to rely on Wi-Fi. Now, the Wi-Fi in the park and also at the hotels is filtered, and if you rent a Wi-Fi device for your smartphone, like your iPhone or Android phone, it's also going to be blocked. So the only way around this is to use a VPN. The one that I use for my laptop is ExpressVPN. Now it doesn't work every single time, but it gets the job done when I need to access something on my laptop on the Wi-Fi. As mentioned, there is free Wi-Fi in Shanghai Disneyland. Now the best place to get Wi-Fi is outside. If you're inside the buildings and especially attraction queues, you're probably not going to have a very strong connection. But on this Wi-Fi, you can use the Shanghai Disneyland app without any problem whatsoever. I'll put links in the description how to get the SIM card and also more information about the VPN and the Great Firewall of China. Number six, not buying your park tickets in advance. You don't want to waste valuable time in the morning waiting at the ticket booth to buy your tickets. Probably the easiest way is through your hotel. If you're staying at either the Shanghai Disneyland Hotel or the Toy Story Hotel, you can buy your tickets with your hotel reservation. That is by far the easiest. Another option is buying your tickets through Kluke. They do offer discount tickets for one and two day passes. If you use our special code KLKTDREX, you'll save $4 off your very first purchase with Kluke. They make it super simple and you just have to print out your ticket and take it to the turnstiles and then they'll exchange it for an actual printed ticket. You can also buy your park tickets right through the Shanghai Disneyland app. It's very simple, just go into the app, and you can select how many tickets you like, and then you also have to pick a date. And also keep in mind that park tickets are a little bit more expensive on holidays and weekends. Just visit the Shanghai Disneyland website for the most up-to-date information on tickets. Number seven, arriving to the park late. You wanna to get to the park about 30 minutes to 60 minutes in advance, that way, as soon as the park opens, you can get in there, start making your fast pass reservations, and start knocking out some of the attractions in the standby line with shorter waits. It'll make your day so much easier, and it's worth getting up early for. Number eight, not staying at a Disney hotel. Now, Shanghai Disney Resort has two hotels, the Shanghai Disneyland Hotel and the Toy Story Hotel. And if you stay at these hotels, you get the benefit of being on property, free shuttles to and from the park, guaranteed entry. And also if you buy your tickets with your room, you will get an extra fast pass every day for everyone in your party while you're staying at the hotel. But the biggest thing that you get is 30 minute early entry into the park. And I think this is totally worth it. Now you get a special entrance in Disney Town that takes you just right beside Tomorrowland and you get into the park 30 minutes in advance and you can start riding the attractions and getting your fast passes before anybody else gets into the park. This makes everything so much easier. Number nine, not knowing that you can check the restaurant menus on both the official website and the official app. This makes it so much easier to plan what you're going to eat. So you can go into the official Shanghai Disneyland app and browse to the restaurants. And if you scroll all the way down, you will see a list of what is on the menu and they even give a price range. This makes it so much easier to plan out your day. As for restaurant recommendations, I recommend the Wandering Moon Restaurant, the Toy Box Cafe, the Tangle Tree Tavern, Mickey and Pal's Market Cafe, and the Royal Banquet Hall, which is character dining inside the Enchanted Storybook Castle. Number 10, only visiting the park for one day. Shanghai Disneyland is a gigantic park and trying to do everything in one day is gonna 
make you feel pretty rushed. So I recommend at least two days at the park so you can enjoy the entertainment, the attractions, the food, and also explore Disney Town, which is their version of downtown Disney, and also soak in the atmosphere of either of the Disney hotels if you're staying there. All right, fellow explorers, thank you so much for joining me today as I showed you 10 mistakes to avoid at Shanghai Disneyland. Now your day is gonna go that much smoother. Hopefully everybody noticed all the different t-shirts that I changed. I have a lot of t-shirts, I know I do. If you're planning a trip to Shanghai Disneyland, I have a full trip planning guide on our website at tvrexplore.com. I'll put a link in the description. If you haven't already, make sure you like and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any more tips to add, make sure you put them in the comments. All right, explorers, until next time.